My name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control software tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. In this Synchronizing Multiple Network Cameras Part 1 tutorial, you will learn how to synchronize multiple phantom cameras using a variety of framing clock sources. Every phantom camera requires a clock source, referred to as a framing clock, that instructs it when to capture the image data seen by the sensor. In networking environments, a single clock source guarantees all the cameras capture their image data at the same moment in time. Phantom cameras can be clocked several different ways. Depending on the method used to clock the cameras, up to 63 cameras can be networked together. The first, and probably the most common method used, is internally timed. Although multiple phantom cameras have been networked together in previous tutorials, the cameras were never synchronized. Essentially, they have been standalone cameras controlled by a single application, the PCC software. Although the graphic only shows three cameras, I can use this method to clock up to 63 cameras. The only requirement is I need to connect the cameras to the control computer through an Ethernet hub or Layer 2 switch, formerly known as a repeater, or a Layer 3 switch, formerly referred to as a router. The reason they are considered to be standalone cameras is because each camera has been configured to use their internal oscillator as their framing clock by selecting it from the Live tab, Advanced Settings, External Sync pull-down selection list. The caution here is when using this method to frame clock the cameras, there is no guarantee that the images being recorded are at the same moment in time. The reason this could occur is that it is possible that over time these clock sources, or the oscillators, could drift apart, thereby affecting the moment in time the images were captured and certainly skew any timing measurements that may be required. For more details on performing timing measurements, please review the Cine Analysis Part 1 Timing Measurements Tutorial. I know the cameras are not synchronized, because if they were, the current time field would indicate it by placing an S after the timestamp, as you'll see in just a little bit. So let's talk about ways to synchronize cameras using a single clock source. One way is to use one of the camera's internal oscillator to generate an IRIG B inner range instrumentation group timecode B standard equivalent pulse to frame clock up to three additional cameras. As you can see in the graphic, for this scenario, I have three phantom cameras networked to the control computer via an Ethernet layer 2 switch. This could be an Ethernet hub or a Layer 3 switch. In this case, a Layer 2 switch, just like it was when they were clocked internally. However, I need to do a little more cabling to synchronize the cameras. Since I'm using the Phantom V12-1 Cam1 Cameras Internal Oscillators iRig B generator to clock all the cameras, I'll need to connect from the iRig out BNC connector of the clock source camera, in this case, the Phantom V12 Cam1 camera, to the iRig in BNC connector of all three cameras. That includes sending it back to itself. You'll understand why in just a moment. Depending on the camera model, these connectors can be found on the rear of the camera, labeled as time code out and time code in, or iRig out and iRig in. If they are not on the rear of the camera, these signals are accessed through a breakout box or a capture cable. Next, I need to connect the F-Sync BNC connectors of all three cameras together. The F-Sync signal threshold is plus 5 volts maximum, so the input is also compatible with TTL levels and must be properly terminated at 50 ohms. Like the iRig connector, the location of the connector will be camera dependent. This signal is required to initiate the acquisition of image frames. The last bit of cabling I need to do is to connect an external trigger to the trigger in BNC of all three cameras. In this case, I'll be using a pickle switch or a switch closure 
to trigger the camera simultaneously. There are a couple rules that must be followed to synchronize phantom cameras properly. The first rule is a hard trigger must be used to trigger the cameras. If I were to apply a soft trigger, use the BNC trigger button. There is no guarantee the cameras will trigger simultaneously due to the way the Ethernet protocol works. Ethernet only allows one device to communicate over the medium or wire at any one time, thereby restricting all the cameras from being triggered simultaneously. With all the cabling completed, the next step is to lock or group the cameras together so any changes I make will be applied to all the locked cameras. We will cover camera groups in the multi-camera control tutorials. Notice the border of all three cameras have turned red indicating they are locked together. For this tutorial I'm going to use the full memory block of each camera to record the event by selecting one partition under the camera setting selector. Then close the selector. In the Cine setting selector I'm going to set all the cameras so they can record at a sample rate of 5000 frames per second. To do this I need to set the resolution to 1024 by 560. This resolution was determined by the Miro camera's resolutions supported frame rates. The second rule to synchronize phantom cameras properly is all the cameras must be set to the same sample rate or recording speed. The reason for this is in the event the clock source is lost, the camera will fall back to its internal oscillator and record at the sample rate specified until the clock source is reacquired again. For this example, I'm going to set the sample rate or framing clock as I said to 5000 frames per second by typing it into the sample rate data entry field and hitting the enter key. This brings us to the third rule. The exposure time setting or slave clock cameras cannot exceed the maximum exposure time of the master clock camera. Since the cameras will be placed at different angles to the event, I'm going to temporarily unlock the cameras and set their exposure time settings individually by clicking on their preview panels and adjust the exposure time one at a time. I'll also set the trigger position to a value so all cameras will provide me enough time to capture the event individually. Unlike with previous versions of PCC, it is no longer required that all the cameras be set to the same post-trigger value. However, Vision Research recommends the post-trigger value be set the same for all the cameras, thereby instructing each camera to record the same number of images from the trigger point to the end of the recording. With the Cine settings defined, the last couple of steps are to relock the cameras, click the advanced settings selector and scroll down to the external sync options, and select lock to iRig from the sync imaging pull down selection list. Before I move on I want to point out the master camera serial field which is disabled right now because of the clock source selected. We'll talk about this option in the next method of synchronizing cameras. As for the frame delay field, entering a value greater than zero, the default value, specifies a delay time between the clock source pulse and the frame capture, essentially providing a phase shift in the capture timing. And finally the last rule. If there is an independent F-Sync connector on the rear panel of the camera, the frame delay of that camera can be set to a value equal that set in the master camera. If the camera requires a breakout box or a capture cable to use F-Sync, the frame delay must be set to a minimum of one microseconds greater than that of the master camera setting. So why would I want to set a frame delay? In order for me to explain, you need to understand the concepts of frame interval and straddle time, shown here in the example. The frame interval or frame duration is the reciprocal of the exposure time setting. Essentially, it's the amount of time a sensor's diodes will charge when exposed to light. Each of those diodes 
needs a certain amount of time between each frame to clear their charge from the previous exposure. This time is known as the straddle time. Depending on the Phantom camera, this straddle time can be up to 7 microseconds in duration. And more importantly, during this straddle time, the diodes cannot accept a new charge, otherwise the resulting image would experience a ghosting effect from the previous exposure. So let's say that the duration of the event I need to capture is only 3 microseconds. It's possible that without adding a frame delay to one of the cameras, that the event could take place during the straddle time. For this example, let's say, I needed to capture the separation event. Notice the event takes place during the camera straddle time, thereby missing the event. However, if I add a frame delay to camera 2, it's capturing image data in the sensor's diodes while camera 1 is experiencing its straddle time, thereby ensuring I capture the event by one of the cameras. Another use is to offset the propagational delay induced by the medium. There are other applications, but these two tend to be the most critical. For this tutorial, I'm going to leave the frame delay set to 0 microseconds for all cameras. OK, so let's move on. Earlier, I mentioned the software would indicate the cameras were synchronized by placing an S after the timestamp field when the camera is synchronized to a clock source. It also tells us the source of the timestamp. As you can see here, it's being provided via the IRIG B formatted signal. With the cameras still locked together, I'm going to place them all into the recording mode. Wait for their pre-trigger buffers to fill, then apply the trigger signal. For this tutorial, I'm capturing the LED display of a timing board, so I can visually show you afterwards camera synchronization. The outer circle of LEDs are nanoseconds, the middle ring microseconds, and the inner group hundreds of a second. When I trigger the cameras, I want you to notice that the record indicators do not indicate the cameras are recording simultaneously. However, when I look at the capture LEDs on the rear of the cameras, I can see that they do trigger together. Again, this occurs because Ethernet only allows one camera at a time to update PCC with its status. If we look at the cameras under the Manager tab, you can see all the cameras have recorded a Cine into their memory buffer. Now, if I go to the Play tab and lock the Cines together, again you'll notice that a red border has been placed around the locked Cines. And if I jump to the T0 or Trigger frame, Notice all the cines have jumped to their T0 frame. And the LEDs on the timing boards are at the exact same point for the synchronized recorded cines. And as I advance the cine one frame at a time, notice how they move to the same LEDs on the timing board simultaneously. We will cover reviewing, editing, and saving the cines from multiple cameras more in the multi-camera control tutorials. The next method of using a camera's crystal oscillator to provide an external clock source to up to three additional cameras is very similar to what we just did. However, there are a few minor differences. As you can see in the cabling diagram, the only difference is the elimination of the IRIG B clock pulse connection. This connection is no longer needed because the cameras will be clocked using the F-Sync clock pulse being generated by the master camera's crystal oscillator. And as I mentioned earlier, the F-Sync signal threshold is 5 volts maximum, so the input is also compatible with TTL levels and must be properly terminated at 50 ohms. The same rules and recommendations apply when configuring the cameras using this method to synchronizing the cameras. A hard trigger must be used to trigger the cameras. All cameras must be set to the same sample rate or recording speed. The exposure time setting of the slave clock cameras cannot exceed the maximum exposure time of the master clock camera. And if there is an independent F-Sync connector on the rear panel of the camera, then all the cameras can be set to an equal value of the master camera setting. 
If the camera requires a breakout box or a capture cable to use the F-Sync, the frame delay must be set to a minimum of one microseconds greater than that of the master camera setting. Unlike the last method, where Vision Research recommended that all the cameras be set to the same post-trigger value, thereby instructing each camera to record the same number of images from the trigger point to the end of the recording. With this method, the software is going to lock the post-trigger value to the master camera's setting, as you will see in just a minute. This means that I have to set a value that is valid for all the cameras by checking the recordable image range of all the cameras first to ensure I don't exceed the camera with the lowest range. Since all three cameras I have here can record 11,000 post-trigger frames, I'll leave the last field at 11,000. For this example, the only changes I need to make are to the camera's external sync, sync imaging clock options, and tell the slave clock cameras the serial number of the master clock camera. To do this, I'm going to unlock the cameras. As you can see, the red border has been removed from the preview panels of the cameras, indicating they are no longer locked together. Now I can activate the master clock camera, the Phantom V12 One Cam One camera, by clicking on it in the preview panel, or selecting it from the camera pull down selection list. Now I'll scroll down to open the advanced settings selector, and select internal from the sync imaging pull down selection list. Now I can select either one of the Mero cameras preview panels, then click the lock button. Notice only the two Mero cameras indicated they are locked. This occurs because they were assigned to the Cameras Group Demo Group in the User Interface Part 1 tutorial. Or I could select the Cameras Group Demo Group from the Camera Pulldown Selection list. With the mirror cameras locked together, I can now set them to be externally timed from the Sync Imaging Pulldown Selection list. I also need to enter the serial number of the Master Clock Source Camera in the Master Camera Serial Data Entry field. In this case, the serial number of the Phantom V12 Cam 1 camera, 10277. Notice the Capture and Trigger buttons have been disabled once the serial number of the master camera has been entered, indicating the Miro cameras are now synchronized to it. I also want you to notice that the Image Range and Trigger Position sliders are disabled. To place the cameras into the recording mode, or abort recording process, I need to select the master clock camera, the Phantom V12 Cam 1 camera. Notice when I do, the capture button is active. And just as I have before, I'll place the camera into the recording mode, wait for their pre-trigger buffer to fill, and apply a hard trigger to trigger the cameras. Now that the cameras have triggered and finished recording their cines, I can open the Play tab, lock the cines together, and review, edit, and save the cines. We will cover reviewing, editing, and saving the cines for multiple cameras more in the multi-camera control tutorials. The remaining camera synchronization methods will be covered in part two of this tutorial.